Hey guys, it's Connor and today we're gonna to talk about faking camera movement in editing. Should I put on pants for this? No, it's not, doesn't matter. One of the biggest keys to having cinematic, professional looking video is camera movement. But not all of us have the money to invest in gimbals and glide cams and sliders and all those different rigs that can achieve really smooth, cinematic looking camera movement. The good news is that if your camera shoots in 4K, 2K, or even just really nice, crisp 1080p footage, you can actually fake a lot of these camera movements in post quite convincingly. Today I'm gonna teach you how to fake pans, zooms, and even handheld camera movement in Premiere Pro. With all of these techniques, what we're gonna be doing is zooming into our footage a little bit to give us room to move around within that frame. If you try to zoom into a low quality file like 720p or even some 1080p footage, you're gonna immediately notice a loss of detail because there just isn't enough resolution there to give us that wiggle room that we need. The clip I have here was shot in 4K, so we've got a lot of resolution to work with, and I'm not exporting it at 4K either, so I can zoom in quite a bit without you noticing any loss of detail compared to the other clips. Start by clicking on the clip that you wanna manipulate, and then go to the Effect Controls tab up here. We're gonna be dealing with these two keyframes for position and scale. If you haven't worked with keyframes before, the simplest explanation I can give you is that it's basically automating a change in settings for you. To show you what that means, we're gonna start by faking a zoom. So I'm gonna place my playhead right at the beginning of the clip, because that's where I want my zoom to start. Then I'm gonna click on the stopwatch icon here, and that's gonna place our first keyframe for us. Here you can adjust the scale if you want, but I'm just gonna leave it at 100 because that's where I want the zoom to start. I'm gonna move my playhead to the end of the clip, which is where I want the zoom to end, and now I can either adjust the setting here or I can click this little button to add a new keyframe or a new setting. Now I can just click and drag to the setting that I want for the end of the zoom. So maybe I want it to end about here. Now if I go to the beginning of the clip and hit play, you can see it's slowly automating a zoom between those two points. You can do the same thing if you want to do a zoom out by reversing those. So I'm gonna move my playhead over to the beginning, or you can use these buttons to jump between your different keyframes. So we'll jump to the first one, and I'm gonna reverse that. So I'm gonna do about 115 to start, and I want it to zoom out. I'll jump to our next keyframe to 100. So if we play that back, now we have a nice, slow and subtle zoom out. Now let's try to do a pan effect, almost as if we had a slider on set. So the first thing we're gonna do is reset all of our motion. So you can either click on the stopwatch to delete the keyframes, or you can just click reset to reset the scale as well as the keyframes. We're gonna make sure our playhead is at the beginning again. Then we're gonna go up and click on the stopwatch for position this time. Now if we try and do any movement as it is, we can move our clip around, but we're gonna see these black borders because we don't have any extra information there to play with. So in order to fix that, we're gonna to go to the scale and we're just gonna zoom in a little bit. Let's do something around here. Now if I want to move my clip, we've zoomed in, so I've got a little bit of extra information on each side before I hit those black borders. So I'm gonna start all the way over here just where that black border starts, and then I'm gonna move my playhead to the end of the clip. I'm gonna create a new keyframe, and I'm gonna adjust that setting again all the way over to this side. Now if I play it back, you can see we've got a pan movement now. The biggest difference between real camera movement and fake camera movement is the lack of a parallax effect. This is when two objects that are at different distances from the camera almost look like they're moving at slightly different rates. If I was actually panning my camera, the foreground object, the one that's closer to the camera, would seem like it's moving faster than the background object. And as a result, I'd also see different parts of the background as the camera passes that foreground object, revealing different parts of the background. Fake camera movement can't take into account the distance between the two objects that you've filmed. We're just working in a 2D space and we're moving the entire clip over. So as a result, we can't fake that in any way, which is why it's really important that you choose your shots carefully. Try not to use this effect on anything where you have a really close foreground object and a really far background object because that will exaggerate and subconsciously point out to us, this doesn't seem quite right. You'll notice in these example clips that I don't have any foreground objects, so it's a lot easier to convince the audience that this camera movement is real. If you wanna speed up any movements, you can move keyframes closer together, 
and it'll go faster. Or if you want, you can also use more extreme settings, but that's gonna require you to zoom into your footage even more. The last thing I'm gonna show you is fake handheld movement, which I use a lot. It's super handy. And the presets I use are actually ones you can download yourself. I'll leave a link in the description. These are the handheld presets that were used on the movie Deadpool. As a result, they are very high quality and there's a few different presets to choose from depending on how much motion you want or the focal length that you used. I'm gonna reset everything one more time and get rid of our keyframes. And now I'm gonna go to effects and type in Deadpool and all these presets come up. The one I like to use a lot is long lens. Just click and drag it onto your footage and hit play. And now you have some fake handheld movement as well. I do actually use these presets in my work and the footage you're looking at here was a project of mine where I actually did use fake movement. This is something where I just set it up on a tripod and I knew in post I was gonna add the handheld preset and it turns out really, really well. Because you're losing a little bit of resolution and detail when you zoom in, a little bit of a tip to minimize the difference in detail between those fake camera moves and the real true 4K clips is to export in a slightly lower resolution than your footage is at. For example, if you're working in 4K and you zoom in on some of that 4K footage, it's gonna be very apparent that those clips are lower detail and lower resolution if you export it at 4K and you watch it on a 4K screen. But if you downscale it and export your entire video at 2K, all of these clips are being downscaled to that resolution, so the quality loss is much less noticeable between the true 4K clips and the ones that you had to zoom in a little bit. The downside here is that you lose a little bit of detail and resolution and you don't get that true parallax effect of real camera movement, but it can save you a lot of time and it also can make it a little bit more interesting on certain shots as well. The best way to use these effects is subtly, just to enhance what's already there. Don't try and create some crazy cool camera move in post because it's not gonna turn out the way that you want. If real camera movement is important, then make sure you do it on set. If this video helped you out, I'd really appreciate you helping me back by subscribing, liking, commenting, all that stuff that you already know how to do. And until then, I will see you in the next video.